welcoming us into your homes and into your space. We really do appreciate that you've been keeping us with uh, keeping up with us and keeping connected. So we're starting a new big picture today. For the next 3 weeks our big picture will be never ending. Last week we learned about Jesus, the hero of our story in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And today we'll learn about what happened next. So we know that the hero may have departed, right? The hero of our story is Jesus and he went up to heaven, but there is so much more of the story still to come. Jesus ascended to to heaven and sent a helper, the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts chapter two, verse one through four, when the day of Pentecost came, all the believers gathered in one place. Suddenly a sound came from heaven It was like a strong wind blowing. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw something that looked like fire in the shape of tongues. The flames separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in languages they had not known before. The Spirit gave them the ability to do this. The book of Acts was written by Luke. He was a doctor and he traveled with the Apostle Paul. The story in Acts follows the the beginnings of how the church began. 
the church is God's plan, fulfilling his promises from the beginning of time. <laughs> we read about Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, as they preach the gospel and lead the early church. And we also meet Stephen, who was the first person to be killed for teaching others about Jesus, and Philip, who, who took the gospel to Samaria and Caesarea. Those are different countries. In the book of Acts, we read the amazing story of a man named Saul, a man who didn't like Christians at all, but on, the, on a road to Damascus, had an encounter with Jesus. And from then on, he became a follower of Jesus and his name changed to Paul. We've learned a lot about Paul in the past. Paul became one of the most important leaders in the church and he wrote almost half of the books in the New Testament. So when I watch a really good action movie, I'm seriously on the edge of my seat wondering and eagerly waiting to know what's going what's going to happen next. And that's exactly how I feel about the book of Acts. It's full of action and adventure as the church grows and spreads throughout the whole world and people come to know Jesus as their savior. Let's never forget, my friends, that the Bible isn't just a book. It's seriously the greatest story ever told. So now we're going to learn more about our big point and our big idea as we watch our big story and our big message. And I'll see you back here when we're done. Everyone loves good news. And the disciples of Jesus in the book of Acts had just that. In the beginning of Acts, the disciples or followers of Jesus continued sharing his message even after he returned to heaven. The disciples and followers of Jesus began growing in community, growing this new church. They would have daily meetings with each other, sharing the good things Jesus had done in them. The good news was spreading beyond the city of Jerusalem as the disciples began traveling around, believing for miracles in the name of Jesus. But not everyone was happy with the message shared by the early church, and some disciples went to prison for what they believed. It was a time of excitement and danger. We get used to having church buildings all around us on street corners in towns and cities, but this was all fresh and new. They were inventing what church looked like every day. One day, while Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, were in the temple, they came across a poor man asking for money. Unable to walk, the man sat at the temple begging for money all day. Upon seeing him, Peter turned to the man saying, I don't have any silver or gold, but I will give you what I do have. Peter commanded the man to get up and walk in the name of Jesus, and he was healed. When the people around the temple saw this, they were shocked. So Peter and John used this moment to share with the crowd about who Jesus really was, and over 5,000 people began believing in Jesus that day. If it wasn't for the early church, we wouldn't have church as we know it today. Because of the faithfulness of the early followers of Jesus, we're able to know God's Word more and make it known. It's now up to you and me as we continue the greatest story ever told. Previously on Big. Are you excited for the premiere of your movie, Funny? I may have promised a few people that would pick them up first. Oh, sure. You're the boss. Dave! B! Oh, Director Tony! Direct, 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 direct. Grace! Zach! Sally! Audrey! Audrey Becky! Becky. Sophie! Kofa! Hey, everybody. It's so great to see you. One, two, three.
hello everybody. How are we all on this fine evening? Actually, no need to answer that. It was more of a he rhetorical like type question. It's good to see you guys. You too, Sophie. Now, down to business. Have you returned to fellowship at your local church congregation? I sure have. Ah, uh, excellent news. I guess now you can all stop talking about me behind my back. Oh. Sophie, you don't have to worry about making friends. You make friends so easily. It is hard in Hollywood. What about church? I haven't been going to church. I was shocked when Sophie said she hadn't been going to church. I may have told a few people. And she said that she hasn't been going to church for like six months. She was going when she moved there, but then she got busy. So she missed one week of church and then another. So after a while, she thought, what's the point? She says she still reads her Bible. And she still talks to God. But as for church, she hasn't been going. I'm still mad about that. Jokes. <laughs> Being away from church taught me just how important it is in my life. Make way, we're coming in! Move! Cecil, Cecil and Bernice! Come on, Cecil! I'm coming! Right here! I'm this way, you see! No, I'm, I'm going to the window! Go in I'm here! Coming. You in my way, you see! Oh dear! Now we're just here to answer some questions. Yes, as seen on our very popular TV show. Cecil and Marie, answer questions. No, oh, look again. Come on, I'm down to 16,842 times. It's too loud. I love that show. I've always wanted to write in, but my name isn't Justin. Oh, uh, yes, well, well, um, uh, we've got an electronic message on my Wii pad from Justin Sanity. Hello, Justin. He's writing in from Banana Salona. That's not even a real place. Yes, I went to Banana Salona in the 60s. It's very appealing. <laughs> well, great. Uh, Justin writes in, how do I know what God's plan for me is? Well, I can answer that 100% without a doubt Ooh. that his plan for you is to stop asking silly questions. Let me put it this way, Cecil. If we don't answer the nice question, we don't get to stay in the nice car. Excellent question, Justin. Yes. In fact, I have an excellent answer for you. Okay. Could be the best answer I've ever given. Ooh, go for it. It's really quite a doozy. Hmm. You're stalling out, you, Cecil. What? How dare you say I'm stalling? You've got nothing to I'm say. I'm not stalling. I've never stolen in all 40 years. What are you doing? All you do is you stall. I You've got nothing not. to say. I've driven a in car. Fact, oh, all right. Never Settle stole. down. You duck crush. I have to hear that song one more time. Are they Justin? I believe so. Oh. We are here to play you our latest jam. It's all about how church is God's plan for us. It's called church. Is God's plan for us. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story. Ever told. The disciples were gathering home to home in caves, apartments, and catacombs. From humble beginnings, the church was birthed. It spread and spread all over the earth. Signs and wonders, worship and praise, love and fellowship for days and days. It grew and grew, a flower and blossom, we're part of it now. Isn't, Isn't that, that awesome? awesome? It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story. Whoa, boys. How did you know what to write about if I haven't given you today's theme? Don't you remember? You wrote the theme on the inside of my bandana. Oh, yeah. All right. See you later. I think you will. Have you finished stalling now, Cecil? Oh, no, I've got it. Justin, it says in the book of Hebrews, let us not give up the habit of meeting together, as some of you are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more. Well, I believe you got it, you old codger. Swabs. Is that even possible? Stephen had you, Jeremy. Hi. Oh, look, a limo full of boys and... 
Oh, oh, Jeremy, we need to calm down. We're here to talk about the importance of church. Ah, uh, yes. Now, we have swapped many things in our lives. Swaps, 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 swaps. Hey, what about me? I didn't say swap. But one thing we would never swap is our involvement in a local church. Yeah, my church is the best. We have a great kids ministry. Oh yeah? Well, my church is even better. We have a great kids ministry with great leaders. Well, yeah, my church is the better than the betterest because we sit under the teaching of the Word of God. Yeah, well, my church is the betterest of the bestest of the betterest because we experience congregational fellowship under the headship of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yeah? 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 Hang on. Do we go to the same church? Oh, yeah. This is rather embarrassing. Yeah. About this time, you'd hope for a notification for a new church, babies. Yeah. yeah. Hello there, my lucky little lamb. Hi. It's <laughs> so good to be back here at church, no? Sure. Yeah, it's like a roller coaster. But I've had a rough week. No. Yes, yes, my friend. You see, on Monday, I ate some sweet chili sauce. Boris versus food. It was hot, but I win. Yay! On Tuesday, I ate chili sauce. Boris versus food. It was very hot, but I still win. Yay! <laughs> on Wednesday, I eat hot jalapeno pepper. Yeah, food win. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm still suffering the consequences. Mm. Yeah, thank you, my friend. But you're the only one who listens to me. So let me tell to you. A number one problem of week. You see, this morning, Mummy read me Chubby Wubby Woo story. Chubby Wubby Woo. Oh, yes. It was so exciting. He go to the zoo. He see a lion. Rawr. He see elephants. <laughs> he see giraffe. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, they, they don't really make a sound, but that is not the point. The point is mummy got a phone call in the middle of reading the book. Then we ran out of time, so she says we will do it later, and I need to know what happens next, but I am stuck here at church, my friend. How can you help me with my problem? Church. What was that, my friend? Here at church. <gasps> Are you telling to me? They just like I do not know next part of story that Jesus' disciples didn't know what would happen after he ascended into heaven, only to discover that the story unfolding right now was working through the church as a central character. And this is the greatest story ever told, so much better than Chubby Wobby Woo. Is that what you are telling to me, my friend? Chubby Wobby Woo. Chubby Wobby Woo. Chubby Wobby Woo. Chubby Wobby Woo. Now back to Justin's question. We know it's important, but what happens if we don't feel like going to church? Well, let's ask someone who skips church on a regular basis. Sophie? Hey, that was a long time ago. What is this face? I told Becky and Audrey that I haven't been going to church. I mean, what's the point? Yeah, it makes sense. Huh? What do you mean it makes sense? Well, it sounds like something that happened to me when I was your age. Pull up a chair. I'm already sitting. Well, it all started when I was a young whippersnapper. <sighs> Gus's story was so moving. He left church because he was so busy and didn't see the importance of going back. Then when he did go back, he realised what he was missing. The rest of his body! I guess that's why they call it the body of Christ. We all work together to help one another out. My life wouldn't be where it is today without the love and support of my local church. Well, there you have it, Justin. The church is God's plan for you. And no matter who you are or what you've done, you are always welcome in God's house. Church. What's happening? Just picking up another friend. Who is it? Is it Justin? Welcome back.
So our big point is the church is God's plan for us. So what is the church? The church is the place where we come together to worship God and to learn more about him. But the church is not just a building. And we've talked about this before. The church is people. You and I are the church. And we're learning that more and more recently since we haven't been able to gather together at church. But just because we haven't been able to go to church together doesn't mean we haven't been able to have church and be the church, right? That's what we've been doing here for the last couple of months. You've welcomed us into your homes and we've been able to have church virtually and we're being the church in other ways as well. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 21 through 23, it says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. The church is God's plan for us, and God's plan for the world to know His love. The church is so important to God's plan that Jesus Himself said He will build it. And we read in Matthew chapter 18, chapter 16, verse 18. So I will call you Peter, which means a rock. On this rock, I will build my church and death itself will not have any power over it. The church is not built with bricks or wood, but with people. When people gather together, they are the church. When more and more people come together, the church grows. When you gather with your family and your siblings and your friends, you are the church. Acts describes how the first Christians gathered and the church grew and grew and grew. In Acts chapter 2 verses 46 through 47, we read, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The church is God's plan for us, my friends. You are the church. We are the church. When we gather together, we are the church. So let's pray now. Dear God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your grace. We love you so much. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. We, we thank you, Father God, for sending your son, Jesus, to make the ultimate sacrifice, to die on the cross for us so that we could have life and be in relationship with you. We know in our hearts and we believe with our entire being that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the way that we can come to you, Lord. Father, thank you for loving us with everything that you are. Help us to be the church and help us to love others as you have loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank you for joining me. I miss you all so much. And I seriously cannot wait for the day for us to be able to gather together as the body of Christ in the same space and not just virtually. I love you all and I miss you and you have a wonderful, blessed day. Bye. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me. His love for me, oh, His love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, He died for me
There's a place for me I'm a child